Why modern MMOs suck? Today's market is nothing but lies. Yo, that's a strong statement by Nark. Let's have a look at what he has to say about modern MMOs. Let's blindly support this one without checking anything whatsoever. <laughs> Special glasses or what? Oh. Nark level one. Oh, is that you, sir? You look somewhat different to what I expected. Well, you know, being a, a sexy, balding, middle-aged man is a bit too overpowered for an online game, so <laughs> I chose to go with a generic human fighter with uh, crippling depression, obviously. Yes, well, most wow. people do like to make characters that are reflections of themselves. Wow, I can't believe how many people... <laughs> do you guys do that too, actually? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously asking this. Do you guys often make in MMOs characters that look like your real-life self? Like, I actually try to do that on a death night. Like, I made a death night and I tried to make it look like myself. <laughs> I don't have so many options in World of Warcraft with that, unfortunately. And... <laughs> It's still funny though. I've tried to come close, like really. But yeah, let me know in the comment section if you're also trying to recreate yourself in a MMO. <laughs> wow, I can't believe how many people there are. It always feels good to play a brand new MMO, doesn't it? Brand new? Attention consumers, and welcome to come. A world I created to monetize you for all your worth. Wow. Uh, what did he say? Silence! <laughs> As of this moment, I am in control of this world, and the reality you lived in no longer exists. Wow. The headset you wear is now melded with your mind, and you can no longer log out of this game. <laughs> However, all is not lost, for we have introduced a few changes to the game that we know you'll all love. No. Daily quests, oh, no. mandatory oh. chores, but oh, most importantly, pay to win. <laughs> oh no. Enjoy your stay, consumers. I actually hate weeklies and dailies so much in MMOs. Like, I hate time locks. And I tell you guys why from a, a da daily life perspective. There are several days where I really don't have much time where I can just play for like a few hours. But there are always those days where I can play a video game for like 8 plus or 9 plus hours. Even longer. Like, and if I have like dailies, weeklies, after 2 hours, if I take my time, I can even be faster on some games. World of Warcraft is crazy fast. Uh, I'm done like after two hours mostly with like stuff that I can do like daily, weekly and then I'm stuck with like so much more time and I can't do shit. Like I hate this in MMOs when there's like a time lock. And what I hated also about for example Genshin Impact, they're like those, those sort of crystals you get and this currency you use to do like dungeon runs, right? And you get like gear from that. But you can only do a certain amount of runs a day in a dungeon. It's like I had this kind of time locks. Or same with like raids. You can just do this once a week, right? Like I wish that Blizzard would change their mind about this. And you can like repeatedly do the same dungeon or raid over and over again. And it's not like weekly or daily or something. I actually wish like more MMOs were like that. Like no limits. The only uh, MMO I can think of where you can do like a dungeon run as many times as you want. Oh wait, there are actually two. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV and uh, Elder Scrolls Online, for example, right? In Elder Scrolls Online, you if you're farming a set from a dungeon, you can make a group with friends and you can run run the dungeon two or three times in a row if you're still missing some pieces after the first run, right? So you do like three runs or so, you have your gear and it's good. But yeah, some MMOs don't have this. And with those like daily quests that have like insane rewards, I think it sucks because... This like forces you to play every day. If if you don't play, you miss out on something important. Or if like for one week you don't want to play the game. Like I get it, like companies want the players to return as often as, as possible so they can keep up high numbers, but I find it's annoying for the players. And yeah, by the way, guys, if you're new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. But yeah, let me know in the comment section what you think about weeklies and dailies. I don't like them really. I wish they didn't exist. For you are now under monetization permanently. Hey, what up, boys? 
I wish I could say that intro was ironic, but sadly, that is a pretty close representation it's of true. what's happened over the years, yeah, especially it's facts. when it comes to Korean MMOs. With the recent arrival Lost of stock. Amazon <laughs> Game Studios and Actor Blizzard pretty much throwing all dignity out the window, I'm sure we're not far off these practices here in the West, and I'm dreading the years to come as the next generation of corporate MMO marketing get shoved down our throats by riot fanboys desperate for another low IQ chore simulator. Marketing, the honeymoon period, and ironically, fanboyism is our topic of discussion today as these have taken a turn for the worst with deception, lies, and overhype wow. to the point where it's That's the true. only tool I have at my disposal to make our highly anticipated MMO not seem like another Chronicles of Alaria. But before we get into that, our patrons and I would love for you to grab yourself a, <laughs> a Copa Cola. Copa Cola, because today I want to highlight some of the most toxic cases of marketing over the years and hopefully spread some awareness for the younger generation who have sadly grown up with this being the norm and have yeah. never actually experienced what good marketing actually is. Yeah, I'm actually wondering about that. If you were like born in the 90s, like I was, uh, you grow up with like games you just buy once and you own them, right? And you can do whatever you want in game. You can get like the best gear, the best this and that. Or you have like games that have just uh, a regular monetization and you pay your 11 euros and 90 cents or something a month, right? And you can play the game as much as you like and stuff. But the younger generations, uh, those born in 2000, for, ex uh, for example, like they grow up with so much free to play stuff where you have to like actually spend money to actually even progress more or get some stuff in game. And they grew up with like those games that used to have not so many tr microtransactions, but that suddenly get those. Like the other day I saw something so crazy and this is about Minecraft and I'm not even sure. No, I think on Java Dish this doesn't exist, but on, on Bedrock, for those of you that know Minecraft, like they're even putting more and more stuff for sale for like those that play on console for even Minecraft. And I know like a lot of younger people are playing that, right? So there are like kids going to their parents, hey, uh, I want for my uh, Minecraft uh, Bedrock, I want to buy this this one add-on, this mod, uh, Daddy, can you give me your credit card or something? And it's the same with like, games like freaking Diablo Immortal, Lost Ark and stuff, or Genshin Impact, especially Genshin Impact, I saw also like a lot of younger people are playing this game. Uh, like Genshin Impact is pay to win, because if you pull with this gacha system a character multiple times, it gets way stronger. <laughs> like you have 10 person more DPS suddenly or something. So it actually sucks to see like the young generation grow up with those kind of games because they never get to experience what we got to experience. Those that were born like the 80s or 90s or even before, because we got to experience games that were all about the world and how good and fun those games are. And you just buy them once you have them or you just pay monthly or like 11, 12 euros and that's it. But yeah, I, I feel sorry for the young generation when it comes to gaming. You never get to like the peak of gaming that was back in the day where like games would last for years and there's no microtransactions, no pay to win. Now you have those fast paced games popular for two years, it's over. Back in the day, a game is big, five years later, people still play that like crazy. Now, I mean, look at Zelda games, for example. Holy shit. Let's begin, shall Old school Diablo 2. Back in the late 1990s and early 2000s, right before the MMORPG genre took off to the heights that we wish it would go back to, marketing for MMOs were almost non-existent. The genre was super niche, and because of this, most of the marketing was done through word of mouth. Social True. media and ways to interact with your friends online yeah. was very limited back in the early 2000s, so of course, we as players used MMORPGs as... You know how our games got famous in like the, the 90s, like early 2000s and stuff? Like, uh, we would go to school, one classmate buys a new game, says to all of us it's fun, and uh, yeah, then we all buy it, <laughs> like I'm not kidding. Or like in one neighborhood, like this was here in my neighborhood, there was like one guy, he got like Diablo 2, 
and like he played it invited us over to have a look at the game uh, we kept buying the game uh, and then we all had it and then our friends came to our homes and they saw us play it and they buy it too so it was like a chain reaction like this one kid in the neighborhood gets like the new diablo game and everyone buys it <laughs> or say with school like high school was crazy like one game gets big everyone buys it like Oh, I remember like with Zelda Ocarina of Time, holy shit, like one person plays it. I think was was I the one that had it like first? Or I was like one of the ones that had like one of the I was like one of the first. And everyone buys it, like everyone gets Zelda Ocarina of Time. <laughs> holy shit, that was crazy. As a way of socializing. Oh, Oblivion. Just like how we Oblivion recommend is also to like that. add people on Discord, Facebook, and react to events going on in the world through YouTube or Twitter. MMO stepped into that role in a very primitive way, so of course, recommending your friends to come play with you was a much relied upon way for the genre to grow and sustain itself. Yeah. However, I wish it would still in the exist. day, these older games were not free of deception. Obviously, a few of them were infamous for screwing over their player base by injecting egregious pay to win, thinking they cornered the market and nothing better would come along. But, but there we'll were touch a few, on the rise right? and fall of lineage in a moment because I want to recite my personal journey within the MMORPG genre first that probably also relates to a large majority of you. My adventures online started RuneScape. with RuneScape in 2002 and 2003. Mine it's with still World of a very beloved game for many, many reasons. In my opinion, though, RuneScape's success was so wide-reaching because it dominated that social need here in the West. I personally loved RuneScape, not for its gameplay, not for its progression, but for the game's ease of access and heavy social reliance. I have very fond memories of progressing through quests, catching lobbies in Karamja, or cutting willows at Draenor, socializing with my peers, and just yeah, treating this is nice. RuneScape kind of like an interactive chat room. It did a good job of being that, and still does to this day. If we the cool thing about like the first MMOs, like my first experience was actually with World of Warcraft. Before that, I was all about RPG games, like single player. Like old school Morrowind, uh, Elder Scrolls Oblivion. I was playing out of Diablo uh, 1 and 2. And I was all about like single player games and stuff. But when I got to play for the first time an MMO uh, game uh, with World of Warcraft, this was actually so interesting and fascinating to me because it was like a whole new experience. Like this was the first time in my life I actually got to play. I walked somewhere on a character, like through some, some playing fields and stuff. Or I, I was like walking basically through the Barrens in, in, in Durota, right? Because I played as an orc when I first made My first character was an orc actually. And I was like running around the world. Now I see like other characters appear and they chat with me in game and stuff. And I was like, Oh wow, you can actually meet other people in game and social like uh, socialize. You can form groups and slay elites and do quests together. <laughs> like this was a crazy experience for me back in the day because I have not known it. Like the the, the only multiplayer experience I had before World of Warcraft was with Age of Empires. And I would like visit a classmate that had two computers because his brother or something moved out. I don't know what happened with his brother, but he was no longer at home. And he got he got like a computer there and I got to use it and we connected the computers and we were playing uh, Age of Empires together. And this was the first I was like playing with another person. Then came World of Warcraft. This was so fun for me. It was like a brand new experience to meet other people online instead of real life. <sighs> I remember those memories. I was addicted. I would not stop playing. Like sometimes I would play for like 10 plus hours straight. Now I still try to play as long as I can, but my life has gotten so busy that I'm like happy when I have like five hours of, of game time or something in a day. <laughs> and still does to this day. If we take a quick look at the relevancy of MMOs back in the early days when subscription numbers were still publicly available, you can see how the player base shifted from MMO to MMO over time, starting with Ultima Online in 1999, oh, yeah, then Online. when Lineage and EverQuest came along, arguably better EverQuest games was as technology too. advanced into a 3D setting, players could interact better and the gameplay was more compelling until WoW eventually smashed onto the scene in 2004 
right off the back yeah, this of was Lineage MMO's 2, breakthrough. the pinnacle of social gameplay at the time. The sad thing about Lineage 2 is that although it was very social and thrived as a massively multiplayer online yeah. role-playing game, it was monetized in a way that couldn't captivate the Western audience like World of Warcraft did. WoW was not yeah. only built off an already established and highly loved franchise, but it also monetized and advertised itself in a way that appealed to the Western audience as True. well as filling in and innovating on the social needs with new, much more... Uh, this was the reason why I was hesitant to get World of Warcraft back in the day because um, you have to pay monthly because it has a subscription and back in the day I would just buy games, pay once like my $50 uh, or something or $60, I would have the game I could play it endless, like infinite, right? But when World of Warcraft came out, there was a subscription and the reason why I decided to go for a sub at some point was because the developers, they promised you are paying every month, but you know what, we are still developing the game. So while you're paying your monthly sub, you're actually using the money to give you more and more content. So it is a game you, yeah, you pay every month for a little bit, not as much as if you buy a game at once. But you have to expect every half year or one year some big patch or update. You get like a new dungeon every half or one year or some new zone and stuff. So this was what like convinced me to get it anyway, even though I have to monthly pay for it. And it was worth it, I think, because they did release some really cool content. Because after some time came TBC, then there came different phases of TBC. Then there was like a Wrath of the Lich King and stuff. And it was like really, really fun and I saw like what was like going on here and this and that. Like, wow, I remember back in the day. I think this kind of monetization model is better where you pay like a small amount of cash every month, but you know what you're getting. Then if you have to like gamble or something or you get like maybe like another... Like this was like with Diablo Immortal the problem. There was like a way to actually spend money. So if you're doing a rift, you get like better or more drops, right? Uh, this is also RNG because you don't know what you're gonna get and you spend money for it. Same with like gacha games. It's like gambling and I don't think it's healthy. And you can actually spend a lot of money but get little from it. On others spend maybe a bit less money and they get more from it. So I don't think it's even fair user-friendly gameplay from both a content point of view and a moment-to-moment -moment gameplay point of view. You know, as long as you were playing anything but a mage. Many other <laughs> MMORPGs what? came What's after wrong with WoW, mage? MMOs that were infamously known as the WoW clones, and over the years, as the genre has fizzled out That's along so with true. its soul, more and more to copy egregious this. marketing has been introduced, even weaponizing the audiences themselves with tribalism Which or content creator dead? influence. And this is where the lies and deceit begins. I don't think anyone in existence can deny that World of Warcraft <laughs> adverts that. and marketing back in the day was the result of a switched-on, well-connected development oh, team yeah. appealing to the exact audience they want in the perfect way. Mr. T, Ozzy Osbourne, and many other huge names speaking yeah, for the game it, really yeah. resonated with us as an audience, and I think this marketing push will always go down as a genius move by Blizzard. For However, sure. the hat was pretty much the peak. Osbourne wasn't it? Strokes of genius like that are generally oh, hot, the result yeah. of talent and passion putting quality and relatability before profit and margins. Never in a million years would a large corporate entity spend money on celebrities when they can instead use a whole new medium of influence to appeal to their audience for a much, much lower price. Balding, middle-aged men <laughs> in front of a camera. And before we start talking about marketing tactics to- I actually feel such I'm so sorry for like Esther. Like people are always calling him out as bald and stuff. Like balding, middle-aged man. <laughs> like, I actually think this must be so annoying, right? Like if if you're always being like uh, like mentioned, oh balding, bald, like oh I'm G. Like I think he has enough of this. Like seriously, like uh, I would have enough too if like people would constantly uh, point out something about me and repeat it over and over again. Every creator that reacts to my content or, or mentions it like mentions this about me only. Ah. Uh. But yeah, look at how many players there were. Like, I miss those good old days where, like, so many people were playing. Like, for Dragonflight, a lot came back to WoW, but, like, these numbers, I don't think we will ever reach them again. Men in front of a camera. But before we start talking about marketing tactics today, I do want to highlight a few modern-ish examples of marketing done right and marketing done wrong. 
I think Rift back in 2011 did a great job of marketing their game by appealing to that audience who are getting sick of the post-cataclysm World of Warcraft gameplay by outright mocking Blizzard for their shortcomings after Wrath of the Lich King. By oh. appealing to an audience by being ballsy enough to mock Azeroth, they made a significant mark on the scene with their game. Basically, improving on World of Warcraft's formula with similar gameplay but introducing more in-depth customization that we all missed from WoW at the time. Oh, Sadly yeah. though, the game burnt itself out far too quickly, and although the game did start super strong with many updates in quick succession, they did fail to maintain an audience as the game was passed between publishers like some sick flesh puppet being milked and thrown aside. On the yeah. other hand, though, we have the MMORPG that, ironically, still stands strong today, but was infamous for terrible marketing and i think that's Which a one? real shame because guild wars 2 oh, is guild indeed wars. a very well made mmorpg over the years arena i have not played guild wars but i keep hearing like guild wars is so good like it was too you should try it is worth checking out and stuff and i consider like actually giving it a try if there's like ever a new guild wars maybe i'll get it because I heard like good about it and apparently like combat is really fun in Guild Wars. Like I can confirm this because I never have played it, but I heard so much good stuff about Guild Wars. And yeah, I, I should give it a, a shot at some point, especially if like a new one comes or a big expansion. Oh wait, they also have like free trials sometimes, right? Maybe then I can test it a very well-made MMORPG. Over the years, ArenaNet and NCSoft have made some legendary failures when it comes to marketing, and none even come close to the launch trailer, which is probably the most important marketing push any game can ever make. They tried to appeal to someone with subliminal messaging and real-life actors doing uh, whatever this is. And on top of that, they even spoiled the final boss in the launch trailer. And it just goes to show how disconnected NCSoft oh. and ArenaNet were back in 2012. To be honest, not much has changed because even to this day, the marketing for this MMO is by far the weakest out of them all. Which leads yeah, us nicely probably. on to I never heard day about marketing. And if I'm honest, this game. they all yeah. grind my gears and reflect that brainless consumer mentality of today perfectly have i even seen any uh, ad on youtube about guild wars maybe just once or twice in my whole life uh, something popped up that mentioned guild wars like i don't see so many ads for the game at all like even elder scrolls online on final fantasy 14 does way more marketing when it comes to like spread the word that our game exists like for guild wars i have not seen so many ads like seriously grind my gears and reflect that brainless consumer mentality but of you today need this you perfectly. need it like... trailers back in the day were simple they had a narrative, True. a flow, and generally used characters that appealed to us on emotional levels. And exploration was, was the pinnacle uh, big... of this, of course, as the characters they used were generally characters who meant a lot to us when we were younger. However, ever yeah. since like Legion, Arthur's, right? really, this is all Blizzard have left up their sleeve, trying to shove our beloved characters down our throats like Sylvanas, Illidan, and Alex Straza, but ultimately twisting these characters into something else entirely, something that reflects modern day expectations. Illidan remained untouched, luckily, being put into a hyperbolic time chamber for Blizzard to break oh, open later, no scene. doubt. But the real tragedy of modern Blizzard's agenda was Sylvanas, a story arc that took a turn for the worst and after Shadowlands, if anyone thinks Alex Straza is going to receive better treatment from these Twitter activists, then sadly, you are lost, my friend. We can use Amazon Game Studios as pretty concrete proof of today's emphasis on marketing simply by looking at their trailers and campaigns throughout 2021 and 2022, putting out multiple million dollar trailers showing off the most deceitful gameplay I've ever witnessed things that borderline don't even exist and pushing a narrative um that is sort of true but but one thing i actually have to give them credit for like even though it looks like super nice and stuff in the trailers in the world if you actually walk around you i actually think exploration is not that horrible i think actually they really did well with like the graphics and the look like it definitely fits modern standards and exploration isn't too horrible in um 
uh, new world. But there's one problem I have when it comes to exploration, though. I feel like the areas are too small. I wish like the world was bigger. But then again, like maybe because they also have like higher graphics and stuff, maybe it's actually more difficult than in WoW to actually create a super large area, right? Because if you have like better textures, this and that, like, yeah, it will take more power from the server and stuff and you need like more storage, this and that. So maybe it's because it has modern graphics that they made it so small or because they didn't have that much time to develop it. I, I'm still like trying to guess why the world is there so small. And what they actually decided to do is, uh, this is something that they not officially said, but that a lot of us had, have already figured out and guessed. They actually didn't want us to have riding mounts and stuff. And I think one of the reasons why they didn't add those riding mounts to New World when it released was because they knew the world is not so big. So they want people to travel by foot so it feels bigger. Yeah, this is something I was a little disappointed because when it was announced that they're going to work on that, I thought when it releases, it would be very big, like a world as big as World of Warcraft almost, but it wasn't. Play I've ever witnessed things that borderline don't even exist and pushing a narrative that is simply a lie, leading to two of the most violent falls in relevancy in the history of the MMORPG genre. New World had an audience of over 900k at launch due to their marketing, and yeah, Lost Ark had marketing. over 1.3 million, only for both to collapse yeah. under the pressure of a live service. Lo and behold, New World was an empty shell of a game with more money put into marketing than actually designing game. it. And Lost Ark is a glorified gambling simulator. And this ties yeah. into our next modern day technique used very often by our corporate overlords. Twitch drops are a sad, shallow way to increase player retention and boost uh. content creator numbers. Twitch drops are basically free loot or rewards and most of the time, it's convenience-based things that all... You know what's disgusting about Twitch drops? Like, if you're streaming a game and you have them enabled, like 80% of the people that are watching you, it could be even 90%, and this is not a joke by me, this is actual fact, they actually will minimize the screen and they will just open your stream but not actually watch you play the game. They just have it open in the background. Maybe they're not even in the room. Like it's just, just running and they know after one or two hours they receive something. So what they do is they, they pick a random streamer that has it enabled. It could be you. And then they just open it. They do something else or minimize the screen. They're not even watching. They just want the drops like... Guys, like if one of you has done it and you want to admit it, like, it is no shame. Like I have done it myself. I'm going to be honest. Like I did open some people's uh, stream. I didn't watch them. I was not even at home. I just wanted to drop. Like I have to admit it. But yeah, and then I got the drop. I closed it and that's it. And I think this is actually... Like, sure, you will be happy if you're streaming. And usually, let's say you have always 40 viewers, right? Like, 40, 50 viewers. And then, like, you enable uh, those drops. And then you suddenly grow up to, like, 150 viewers at a time. But for us, like, 150, only, like, 40, 50 people are actually watching you. And the rest, they just have it open or something. Or minimized. So, uh, I don't know. But the thing is, because it has high numbers, like, you are more often recommended, right? Like, I think this would actually be crazy on YouTube. If YouTube had drops, it would break the algorithm. Because YouTube is like this. If you have, like, a certain amount of views, like, let's say a video gets in just one day 900 views, like, you would be sure to have, like, 5 or 6K, even more views after one month on this. This is a live stream video. It doesn't matter. So, so if you have, like, streams, and, and they sometimes will get because of drops on YouTube, not Twitch, 10k views instead of your average 2-3k views because of drops. Like this 10k view you can have like 100k uh, views after a month because of the broken algorithm, right? Because YouTube detects it as sort of popular because you reach over 10k views and it spreads further. So yeah, if, if this was for YouTube available, whew, that would be sick. <laughs> it would break everything. Increase player retention and boost content creator numbers. Twitch drops are basically <clears throat> free loot or rewards, yeah. and most of the time, it's convenience based things that already compromise the essence of MMORPGs. Experience boosts, cosmetic outfits, and even cool in pets. some cases, <clears throat> Lost Ark, straight up items that affect your progression. If you don't participate in the these Twitch drops and watch your favorite up. balding streamer sit around advertising gambling mechanics to kids, 
kids, you lose out on potential progression. It's pretty damn exploitative in my opinion, but hey, I guess ethics and morals no longer appeal to today's corporate fed audiences. This increase in, uh, relevancy is one of the core components that fuels my most hated version of marketing in today's age. A yeah. twisted, toxic version of word of mouth. One player base attacking another just for liking a different game is one of the most worthless anti-consumer practices that could oh, ever yeah, possibly exist. Oh yeah, with FF14 this was like coming that. coming from me, I know, but let's not forget, the game I advocate for, quite literally, doesn't exist. And that's exactly the joke. I find it rather funny that people attack a game that doesn't exist just because it wants to fix the current problems with this genre. The Final Fantasy XIV community is by far the worst contender for this as they tend to attack and berate anyone who speaks negatively about their game. We <sighs> see this reflected in nearly all YouTube videos. You know what, that's actually true, like peop people that were playing World of Warcraft and they tried FF14 and they quit it because they wanted to get back to WoW, they were like roasted so bad, like some even received like threats and stuff like that in their emails and stuff, like some creator actually showed this, that someone was like threatening him and stuff, that is a so say like, oh, when I tried Final Fantasy XIV, I, I, I it was kind of like people are expecting a lot of me and stuff. And I actually, I'm going to be honest, I actually have fun playing Final Fantasy XIV. I don't think it's a bad game, but I always feel like if, if you switch a game or you try it on your game, like the expectations are so high, like you have to stay around, you must say good stuff. And, and people watch your every single word, like what, what did he say now? What is he going to say next? And... I was a bit nervous each time I made a FF14 video because I didn't know like what people were going to say about me. If I said anything negative, like because I saw this to also other fellow creators that they were like being roasted and stuff. So I was like, should I even say anything about the game? Because maybe I say something good, but someone takes it as something negative. But you guys that watch me often, like, you know how I am. I was like straightforward and direct. Like if I think something and I always will say what I think. So... Yeah, I am sometimes very critical about certain things. If I don't like something or I see a bug, I will immediately point this out and say, hey, they could have done better here. Or, hey, this quest is boring. Like, I am honest. I If I review games, I have to be honest with my reviews because otherwise I'm just fooling you guys and I'm lying to you about, oh, this game is fun and good. And then you spend money, you play the game and you're going to be all angry at me for, for like, oh, Marcel, you said this game is fun. It's good. You know what? This game sucks. Everything you said was false. It's not in game or something. I'm not this kind of person. If I say something about a game I'm reviewing, I always say the truth their game. We see this reflected in nearly all YouTube videos from creators who've well within their rights to speak out about the game's garbage questing system, low IQ gameplay, and I actually haven't quitted, but I'm on design. a break now. People are so many other games to talk I play. negatively about 14 for fear that they will be attacked by harsh words and downvotes on the internet. In my yeah. opinion, 14 is no dislikes. MMORPG at all. It is the very essence of why MMOs are a failure today with with gameplay that appeals to that single player mentality. I find it laughable that Final Fantasy XIV won best community last year as my personal experiences with them they from have... a creator who's never even made a video about the damn game still received an but they do have some parts of the community that are nice. I think the, the RP community is the most nice in FF14. Like I've met the RP community and those that go like clubbing and stuff at other people's houses and stuff. Yes, this exists. Uh, they like dress up in, in, in almost real life outfits and not like fantasy world outfits. <laughs> <laughs> they don't appear in armors, they appear in freaking shirts and in, 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 like shorts and stuff like, <laughs> like actually I love the RP players in the FF40. I think they're so chill and nice. Overwhelming Maybe amount of because hate, of them they want <laughs> and gatekeeping whenever I mention its obvious flaws. If you don't believe me, all you gotta do is search why I quit Final Fantasy 14 on YouTube and look at that downvote ratio. Oh, oh no, yeah, we're just not like... supposed to see that anymore, are we? But word of mouth in the current year isn't all negative. It 
does still work in a positive way, and I think it highlights just how jaded and toxic the MMORPG player base is specifically, because no other gaming community experiences this at all. Valheim, releasing in February 2021, was yeah. a perfect example of word of mouth working in the exact same way it did back in the early 2000s. That's true. The game popped out of nowhere, shook the gaming genre by storm, and because it was good, people recommended it, exploding its sales to 5 million at this point, uh. and for a small indie dev. I saw actually like many discords of like other games, including World of Warcraft discords. I mean, several ones uh, and also like Final Fantasy 14 discords. And I saw people like uh, uh, spam general chat with I'm playing Valheim. You should try Valheim. Valheim is fun. They were like posting even pictures of their houses and they were in discords uh, of all discord channels of other games and stuff. It was insane dev team with zero gains to their name, it still shows that you don't need an audience, a popular IP, or amazing graphics to be successful. True. You just need the basics of a good game. Passion graphics are not good in this and game. talent. I believe one day within the next few hundred years, an MMORPG is going to be made with the correct ideals, Ashes talent, of creation, but most importantly, passion. And word of mouth will carry it to success, just like it Hopefully. did for WoW back in the day. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO. And Same my opinion here. means nothing without yours in the comments below. And as always, I want to thank my patrons. You guys are the copium particles that keep my inhaler working. Without your support, <laughs> keep my this working. balding middle-aged like man that. wouldn't be able to live his dream of talking shit on the internet. If you made it to the end of the video, surely it's worth giving a like. And if you're one of the 80% who haven't already, why not go ahead and subscribe? And I'll see you in the next one because... You're high. On, on copium. copium. <laughs> I love the ending of his like video, so cool. But yeah, it's actually true. Like today's marketing, they promise you stuff that they don't deliver. Like this was like with New World a lot the case, and and we saw like how angry the community was because uh, they said this and this like Amazon Game Switch. Okay, New World will have this feature. New World will be like this. If you exploit like this, exploration is good. And like people enter the game, there's nothing, no mounds. You walk from one settlement to the other. They are like copy paste settlements. Uh, combat, they are like freaking bugs. If if you actually change your screen size, you become immortal and stuff. They were like the strangest freaking bugs. And the market was also terrible. Like people were just spam farming and everything like dropped in price so much that it wouldn't even matter if you were farming anything or not because you're not gonna sell well anyway <laughs> it was so weird everything like when it launched and, and then like this negative feedback it actually killed the game and now they're actually doing better and there were like some cool updates to new world but nobody plays anymore almost but yeah that's sad also with pay to win free to play i didn't grow up with free to play games i grew up with games where i just pay once and i have them and with ones that have like a regular subscription so you pay monthly a smaller amount but you always get updates so yeah this is i don't know i i don't like a lot of modern mmos i hope ashes of creation will be different and it's going to actually fulfill my dreams and wishes for an mmo but we will see but yeah, if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. I wish everyone a wonderful day. I will see you guys next time.